In this episode, we travel north to Alaska, one of the last frontiers in America, a place where visitors and locals can still experience nature in its purest form. This beautiful state is also home to the largest Coast Guard base in the world, and at the heart of the base lies Air Station Kodiak. Located on Kodiak Island, just south of the Alaskan Peninsula, the Coast Guard base is situated in one of the most remote places in the world, an area so vast that aircraft have taken center stage in the Coast Guard's day-to-day -day operations. Nearly 400 people are assigned to the air station, supporting, maintaining, and flying the various aircraft. Six C-130 airplanes, nine helicopters, and their crews are kept busy performing a wide variety of missions in the often harsh and challenging Alaskan environment. As you see, we cover the Gulf of Alaska, the Bristol Bay area, the Bering Sea, and all up and down the Aleutian chains. If you take this whole map, you can stick this all in the state, the whole United States. So you see our operations area is huge. In fact, the area is over 3,853,000 square miles, approximately one-eighth of the Earth's surface. This large area of responsibility keeps the Coast Guard very busy. They fly nearly 350 search and rescue cases a year. That's almost one a day. The air station operates around the clock, and distress calls can come in at any hour. Supported by the largest and most technologically advanced communication facility in the Coast Guard, the station has the largest radio coverage in the country. Um, we have 24 transmitters, uh, about 40 antennas. I have a crew of about 30 people that just maintain those things uh, day in, day out. Our receivers are located 15 miles from here so that when we transmit, we don't desensitize the receivers and we can hear as far um, as anyone can uh, pump their signal out. With such a great distance to cover and such extreme conditions to consider, quick responses are often difficult but critical. Lives depend on it. Hypothermia is a dangerous reality in the Alaskan environment. Even Coast Guard crews must take extra precautions to protect themselves from the severe climate. The air station's rescue swimmers, who many times are lowered into the freezing Alaskan waters during a rescue, have first-hand experience. The water here in the winter time will be in the uh, temperatures will be in the low 30s. I mean, just above freezing. A person going into the water without any protection at all, uh, their life expectancy is down to, to minutes from the time they enter the water. Uh, their limbs uh, will just go numb. Uh, they will, won't be able to swim, and before you know it, they're underwater and, and they, they drown. It, it's very important for us to be prepared to, to deal in that environment. It's not just the rescue swimmers that need to be protected. The entire crew must be ready for a worst case scenario. Fortunately, this year, the, this suit has been replaced uh, by what's known as an air crew dry coverall. And this suit is basically, it acts the same way as a dry suit does. It allows uh, the, each of the air crew members now to have a suit that has neck seal and wrist seals that are elastic that uh, will give a good seal. So if the person has to go in the water now, now they uh, have an opportunity to stay dry and give them a little more uh, of an opportunity to, to be able to function in the cold water. But as far as the rescue swimmers are concerned, they have to do more than just function. They have to perform. This means intense training for the 21 rescue swimmers stationed at Air Station Kodiak. They train in the pool so they're prepared for the rough waters out at sea. Considered one of the most physically demanding positions, it is also one of the most sought after. There are over 250 rescue swimmers in the Coast Guard, and nearly 10% of them reside in Alaska. For those 10%, it usually takes an extra amount of fearlessness to carry out their tour in the challenging Alaskan waters. Probably the biggest downside to the job is you're going to have a ringside seat to, to some great times, but you're also going to have that ringside seat to some times when things don't always turn out well. In addition to the cold and often bad weather, it's also constantly changing. This, combined with the lack of navigational aids and extreme terrain, 
makes flying challenging and mission planning complicated. Twice daily briefings by Coast Guard forecasters are essential. Well, good morning, XO, and good morning, everyone. Uh, the weather conditions at 7 o'clock this morning are winds were light out of the east at 7 knots. Visibility was down to 2.5 statute miles. We had overcast at uh, 300 feet, and we were looking at light rain and, and uh, fog out there. I, I know that everybody around the country likes to say, if you don't like the weather, wait an hour. But up here in Alaska, that holds very true. Conditions up here can change um, within an hour. Basically, our job is to look at what's, what's going on out there and look at what's going to happen in the near future. So when we launch our aircraft out there, we're able to get them back safely. You never know what the weather's going to be the next 10 or 15 miles around the next corner. And you can go from beautiful clear skies with 10 miles visibility, and then you come around a pass and boom, there's a, a wall of fog perhaps waiting for you. Or you can go into a snowstorm that basically blinds you, and we have to turn all the exterior lights of the aircraft off to use your night vision goggles. The people coming up to fly at Kodiak are usually second tour or, a, or beyond pilots, meaning that they've been flying for at least three to five years before they come up here. That's very important up here because you're going to find that you're challenged in your flying skills uh, much more than you are in the lower 48 due to the terrain, the lack of navigational aids, and the very, very significant weather that we have, especially in the wintertime. 